Synaptic release of neurotransmitters crucially depends on the properties of presynaptic voltage-gated ion channels. However, it is quite challenging to study presynaptic ion channels using classical electrophysiological techniques. The problem here is that the majority of brain synapses are simply too small, approximately 1 micrometer or so, and this is comparable to the size of a typical patch clamp iPad and also to the diffraction limit of optical microscopy, which is normally used to navigate patch clamp iPads to the target structure. To address this problem, we use a scanning eye conductance microscopy, a scanning probe microscopy technique capable of nanoscale resolution imaging of living cells using a sharp nanopipad as a scanning probe. In this case, nanopipad used as a proximity sensor. As soon as sharp nanopipad filled with electrolyte approaching the sample, the current will be reduced, simply obstructed by the sample. This could be used as a feedback mechanism for imaging. So as soon as we move pipette in a raster scan around the sample, the position of the tip could be recorded and 3D topography will be generated. Even very complicated neuronal network could be imaged in physiological buffer with nanoscale resolution. To target the small presynaptic button, First, we can perform fluorescent measurement to identify the active presynaptic button and then target the area with a scanning eye conductance microscopy. And after imaging, using the help of uh, automated control, we can navigate the probe exactly to the exposed surface area of the button to perform patch clamp record. The great advantage of combining skinny eye conductance microscopy with conventional patch clamp technique is that they share a similar probe, a glass nanopipad, which can be used to image the sample with high resolution, safely navigate the probe to the exposed area of the button, and perform patch clamp recording. In this way, we successfully can record single ion channels from the presynaptic membrane in cell attach and excise page configuration. While the combination of high resolution topographic imaging and subsequent cell attach recording using the same nanopipet is a powerful technique capable of mapping ion channels in 3D space at nanoscale resolution, it is limited to areas accessible to the nanopipet. So, for example, ion channels located in the active zone cannot be targeted in this fashion. One way of getting access to this part of membrane would be to obtain a wholesale recording configuration. The problem is that the tip of the nanopipet required for high resolution topography imaging is simply too small to allow rupture of the membrane patch using suction pulses. To overcome this limitation, we came up with an idea of controlled widening of the nanopipet tip. Immediately after high resolution imaging, we positioned the nanopipet into cell free area and increased the tip diameter by controlled breaking of the nanopipet tip against the glass cover we then repositioned the modified pipette onto previously identified synaptic terminal to form gigasil. Now we can rupture the membrane and form a whole button patch clamp recording configuration. In this way, we routinely recorded whole cell sodium, potassium and calcium currents in small synaptic buttons. The integration of scanning eye conductance microscopy components into an electrophysiological laboratory is relatively straightforward and can be performed as an upgrade of virtually any electrophysiological setup that is based on an inverted microscope. And we hope that the set of methods described in our study will be very useful for researchers that are interested in biophysics with small central synapses.